What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to Cruiser Radio, episode 24. I'm your host, Wesley Hill. Join my co-host, Mr. Hunter Harris. Founder Chad Rice on the microphone this week. And we got a special guest. You've seen him before. Mr. Terry Shores is in the house. I'm super excited to have him on the podcast this week. And not only that, we're going to be talking about a lot of fishing. I'm fly fishing, bass fishing, crappie fishing, all the fishing. Super excited about this episode, guys. This is going to be a good one. Let's get into it. Two or three geese and at least two woodies while we were fishing the other night. The grass flat between the dam and Happy Hollow that's mm. on the left-hand side in the curve, yeah. that's where the geese are always sat. Chandler was like, man, when uh, so-and-so was frozen up, I guess when everything was frozen up, back, he's like, I guarantee the birds were here. I'm like, probably. I don't know. I've never fished or hunted on the Caney. It's pretty the fun. The fishing kind of sucks because Does of it really? the plastic hatch. Well, I mean, the uh, trout fishing on the Caney sucks. But yeah, because of the kayakers. Yeah. They've absolutely ruined it. You can't yeah. even fish. I took clients it, out and had kayaks <clears throat> going over their line. Yeah. the uh, You know the rest area right there? Yeah. That that's a decent spot. It's pretty good, and then because the kayakers of, don't really go that far. What about if you get back in the creeks? Do the fish go back there when the water ain't rolling? No. Mm. no, but when the water's rolling, they'll push back. Yep. So if you can get down to those creeks when the water's rolling, you could do good. But I mean, we went quite a ways back in there, and we're before still we started them. running into them. It's that time of year where they run upstream to spawn. Yeah, them guys that I was with were telling me something about. Cause like uh, we were going through portions of the creek where it was like, like filmy over the top. They were like, "That's where them trout like to get." Cause the birds n- can't see them. Can't see them. Mm-hmm. Cause you, dude, we saw a bunch of them with like nicks out of them. They said they thought that was where the birds was probably trying to stab them or something. Yeah, at the hatchery or while they were in the. Cause creek. we saw a ton of those cranes. A ton of them. Need to open a season on those. Yeah, they do. I wonder if they're good to eat. Probably not. It's probably like eating a hooded merganser. All they eat is frog, <laughs> All they eat frogs, frogs and, and fish. fish. Yeah, They don't taste good? As Alex says, like a clam's a-hole. <laughs> a-hole. <laughs> It'll make your whole house stink for a week. I guarantee you that coyote's better than that. It couldn't be worse. Well, the coyote was pretty darn good. I told it you, bro. It did taste really good. I won't lie to you. Hey, if you wouldn't have told me it was listen, coyote, though, I probably would have tried it. But. Listen, this coyote did not stink at all, though. Yeah, but you know what it was eating. Yeah, well, well regardless, it tasted small good. Small mammals and berries, <laughs> rotted, right. dead flesh of things alongside the road. That's okay. I think I got a tapeworm, so from it. So we'll see. Well, maybe it'll get you to lose some weight or something. Hey, screw you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, what's up, guys? Hunter, pleasure as always. Chad, oh, yeah. pleasure as always. Terry, thanks for coming back, bro. Oh, my pleasure. Dude, it's good to see you, man. I haven't yeah. seen you in a hot minute. It's literally since deer season. Yeah. So, well, one day Been a busy season, man. We went, yeah. We went yeah. duck hunting. Yeah. Everybody's gearing up, man, for the Turks. Yeah. What does it start next week? No. This weekend. Well, youth, youth hunt is this youth weekend. Youth is this weekend, which I'm planning on going out. Terry, you're going out as well, right? Yeah. You want yep. to talk about that hunt? It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, through the USSA. Um, it's basically they take kids that have any kind of impairment that they mm-hmm. normally don't get a chance to get into the outdoors or their parents don't hunt, veterans, kids, stuff like that, and take them on hunts and teach them the correct way and the sportsmanlike way to do everything. Yeah, Heck that's yeah. really cool, dude. That is really cool. Dude, something else I was wanting to talk about is uh, because the last time you were on the podcast, we didn't talk about it, but you're a guide. Yeah. You're like a registered guide. Yep, fly fishing on uh, the tailwaters. That's really cool, man, because I remember you're right now you're trying to get a boat too, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, in the process of getting some kind of a drift boat with a jet motor. Oh, yeah. So with with a drift boat, does the – motor go on the end or what does that look like uh so the way that the jet drifter works that i'm looking at it's actually on the front okay and when you row it it's the backwards way it's it's kind of strange how it works but because a drift boat kind of looks like a nanner don't it yeah yeah like i was about to say if you've never seen a drift boat man it looks 
I know they look funky. It looks they funky. Look funny. I had a little two seater drift boat for a while, and it was awesome, but it just wasn't big enough. Yeah, awesome for like. And small with the drift waters, boat, right? Yeah. You, you're most of the time you're hunting like, or you're fishing, like the. You're not going with the. It's like turned sideways, right? Well. Yes and no. Kind of not just, really. Just depends on how you want to drift because gotcha. if you know they have like no drag so yeah. you can sit still in super fast current with very little rowing, rowing effort uh, okay. most, of, most of the time you've got a person fishing and then a person rowing yep oh okay so there's someone always on the oars like just holding the ones position that i've seen they're like then, turn sideways what's the benefits of a drift boat uh, they draft in like four inches of water. Yeah. So, so they get real okay. skinny. Yeah. Yeah. I can, yeah. if, if that boat won't float in it, you didn't need to try to float it. <laughs> you ain't floating nothing in yeah. that Is water. that due to the weight of it or like the way that it's made? Or? Uh, the shape of it and the design on the bottom. Uh, if you've ever looked at any of the drift boats, they have like, looks like somebody took a golf ball and just popped holes all over the bottom of it. And there's like these little dimples. Huh. And hmm. That's it's a helps keep it buoyant, huh? Yep. Crazy. Like traps hair or something yeah. under there. That's wild. That is pretty cool. I didn't know that. I've always wanted I've always wanted to try fly fishing. Yeah, that's Let's something go. I'd like to try. Well, I got into it last year. Um Yeah, I know Chad and I've never really I, enjoys I, it. I never caught a fish on a on a fly oh, rod shoot. yet. So fun though, huh? I don't know if I actually got into it, but I did buy a fly rod and go a couple of times just I didn't know what I was doing or what I, you know, so. I went last week and caught a really nice trout, like 18-inch, three-pound, pretty solid trout. I, I, I take it back. I did catch uh, a couple of uh, small um, smallies. On so you can catch bass. An unnamed too. river yeah. that we know about, yeah. so. That's uh, one of my favorite places to fly fish. Oh, dude, it's Do so you – uh, do you tie your own flies or do you buy them? Some, uh, but when you guide and you take people out that lose 15 <laughs> flies a day. <laughs> it's hard to tie. <laughs> uh, yeah. It gets to a point where if you're using quality tying you just materials. Buy the cheap ones. Yeah, yeah. Go and okay, buy a, a bulk pack of them, get 12 of them at a, in a pack and get them for 40 cents a piece or yeah. cost me $1. twenty plus my time to tie them. Mm. Yeah. Um, yep. Well, That's let me ask well. you this. Do you think uh, like the hand tied, the better quality ones work better? They last longer. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You, as far as look wise, and for the first fish, so it's a durability. And you can go to you can go to Walmart and get some like cheap flies, and they're going to catch, catch fish. fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. you smack the water with them three or four times, and yep. they start to unravel. Yep. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Because I know. I mean, obviously, there's a technique. It's not as hard as you think. It's not. So, uh, so what's the point of doing it? To be able to throw lighter baits. Yeah. Okay. So that's so, the whole well, okay, reason that so the whole trout, whipping motion happens. Yeah, because the line, you're casting the line, not the fly. Oh, also, okay. and trout trout feed on like... Insect uh, flies. Larva of, of flies, yeah, or flies that are hitting the water, right? Yep. So yeah. you're basically and, just mimicking... Some so kind of insect. The first thing that I usually do when I go to a new place that I don't know fly selection on is I go into the water, I flip a rock over, and whatever's crawling on the bottom of that rock, ah. I go into my fly box, and I want something that's as close in color and size and exactly, exactly yep. as what's on the bottom of those rocks. Uh, match the hatch. Yeah, buddy. Match the hatch. Yep. Are you uh, – Are you? Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways to tie on a flyer and them for – whatever do you do like a drop nymph for the fly up top so well, like what's your it, favorite it depends way to i really like dry droppers okay. uh, just because especially in the summertime on the local tailwaters yep uh put some kind of a hopper imitation foam mm -hmm. fly on the top and then run you know a couple nymphs or midges or a combination of both below that on some really light tippet and yep. you know if they're rising after something on the top they're gonna come up and eat your dry fly or if they're eating on the chronomids or the midges or nymphs that are under the water, the yep. larva of them hatching, you've, you've got all the bases covered. Yeah, so it's like... Uh, Cover an array of bot yep. selection there. Yep. It's yep. like the Alabama rig of fly yeah. fishing. <laughs> Caught yeah. my biggest fish on a rig. Did, Did you really? 
Oh, yeah. Huh. It was like end of January, beginning of February. I can't remember exactly. Large mouth? Mm-hmm. How big was it? Like six pounds. Six pounds? Yeah. Nice. I thought I got hung. I caught my biggest one. Well, the biggest one I ever caught was in a pond behind my parents' house. I caught it on a on a Zoom lizard. Can't go wrong with the Zooms. Yeah, buddy. Uh, especially the lizards. But the biggest one I ever caught in public waters was eight pounds. I caught, <laughs> caught it on a... Uh, um, wacky rigged Cinco. Wacky rig's a solid choice. Yes, buddy. It is. My biggest came on a junior size Strike King jig with a Rage Crawl, baby Rage Crawl mm. for a trailer. I love jig fishing. Oh, dude. I do too. That's well, probably my favorite. <laughs> it was so funny that day I caught that. Is this fish, the kayak fish? The yeah. 10 pounder. Yeah. 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 And uh, are you the, caught it in a kayak? Yeah. He's uh-huh. the one on the lake. I don't think I ever seen it. Yes, oh. you did. He sent you pictures of it. Yeah, you showed people, and like they came and asked me about it. And I thought I was talking. I thought you uh, that picture was the one you uh, caught. You're get, you'll have to bleep this out, but yeah, yep. That it was like a perch or something. Oh like well, that. I caught a perch too, like two days before I caught the ten pound large. Dude, perch. that's right. I that's caught, right. Yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember. I caught a perch out of there. It had to be the state record. <laughs> Mine missed the state record by five ounces. <laughs> oh, listen, Terry, this one was bulging with eggs, bro. She was. Have you never huge. seen the picture of mine? You showed me a picture okay. of it. Yeah, yeah, because like the one that they caught that is the state record was caught out of Lake Dartmoor yeah. in Crossville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that thing is ridiculous. Oh, I know. I've seen it. And when I caught the one I did, I like growing up up north we catch a lot of perch yeah but i had never seen one this size yeah and i was like this has got to be a record so i kept it in the net got on google i'm looking at the tennessee state record and i seen it and i'm looking at my fish and i'm like dude this is close. a contender <laughs> so i didn't yeah. even have a set of scales with me i called a buddy and he just happened to be on his way to work and yeah. he ran a set of scales by for me and i weighed it and it was five ounces shy uh, and i was like oh so still man yeah the one i caught I, I never weighed it but i did measure it and it was right at 17 inches yeah that's it's insane so that's, and, and it was it i was crappie fishing there and uh, I I didn't have a clue perch were even in there. Dude. I didn't, didn't either. I was fishing with You're the You're the only other person. Bass. You're the only other person I know have known to catch a perch out of there. Yeah, it was it was. I was like, is that a peacock bass? Like, yeah. what's going on <laughs> yeah, here? Dude, that's I didn't a even bass know there was size per- perch. Yeah, I yeah. didn't even know perch were down here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the day though that I caught that giant bass, uh, the you see the size of the shad that are in there. I mean, there's shad oh, in there the size huge, of your hand, bro. Yeah, they're and huge. And there was something attacking shad and pushing it up against like this little bar that comes out. I was like, "Yo, uh, I'm gonna catch one bass, of those." Yep. I tried a spinner bait. I tried chatter bait. I tried swim baits. I mean, everything that I had that was shad pattern couldn't get a bite. And went to this little brush pile a hundred yards down river of it. Did you throw something off the wall? A jig. That jig, yeah. Yeah, threw that jig into the brush pile, and it just went tight. Didn't even move. Just the line went tight. I was like, well, I'm going to set the hook. And when I set the hook, it just started peeling line. And I was like, oh, man, I've either snagged a carp or Mm -hmm. this is a big fish. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a shock to see come out of there. Well, dude, you can go under the bridge right there when they're, like, moving up to spawn, and there be... 10, 12, 13 pounders right there just chilling under the bridge, bro. Yeah. And I've spent all day long trying to catch them, and they will not bite. Yeah, they've seen every <laughs> bait in Cookville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guy that uh, – there's a guy – I can't remember his name. He's an old dude, but he uh, used to be a taxidermist. And I was down there fishing a lot, and he started a page that said save – Make sure you bleep that out again. But, yeah. Um, he started that page, and he was down there, and he was talking to me about it, and he was, like, talking about all the silt that washed down and the city won't do anything about it. And then uh, he told me that he mounted a 14-pounder out of there. Golly. Yeah, there's another old dude that comes in the store all the time, and when I caught that fish, you know, I was yeah. a couple of the old-timers. I told him where I caught it at, and he said, yeah, I've got four on my wall over 12 pounds that come out of there. And I was like, golly. And I thought my 10-pounder was yeah, like bro. the yeah. fish. Yeah. yeah. There, there's, dude, there's some more 
smaller bodies of water around here that are sleepers yep. that hold giants. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's on the end of that river. Yep. You know where we're talking about, yep. too. Yeah, yep. well, one of the biggest bass ever caught on a fly rod was there by the bridge pylons. Was it? Yep. All right, nice. what are you talking about? Yeah, okay. Dude, I got a buddy that... Wins kayak tournaments all the time out there. In that small body of water. It's a pain in the butt to fish because you can only fish it out of a kayak. But to get your kayak down there, you have to drag it like yeah, it's kind of 70 yards, yards, 100 yeah. to 70 yards. And most people that are fishing. and And to get it out is even worse because you got to step out in the mud up to your knees just to get your kayak out. At so least they came in and moved all that brush out of the way. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that was a pain in the butt. But the too. opportunity to catch a good fish is high. Oh, and, dude, it's loaded with crappie. Yep. Hmm. That place is There's carp in there, too. So, <laughs> speaking about where you caught your fish, at, I had a crappie swim bait that I was throwing around there, dude. And I was, dude, I caught like four or five, six pounders out of it it's that day that I was throwing crappie? that around, man. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'll say Bass. Just... Bass. You know where the neighborhood is when you go up river? Yep. Like right when you get to that, like there's and like that a pinch to the right. There's yep. a pinch point right there. Dude, I threw that swim bait right there, and I pulled two, like, five or six pounders out of there, back-to-back casts. See, I like going up and mm-hmm. where that house with the cave is. Yes, yep. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's uh, there's a tree that's in a bend up there, yep. and it it's never money, never fails. Every time there's always a lunker on it. Throw it up into the current and let it drift into that tree, mm-hmm. and you better hold on. You better hold on, dude. That place is. I haven't fished there in a little while. I but, haven't fished there in years. But I'll tell you, like four years ago, that place was money. Because well, nobody I'd was say it's no, still good. It was 2020 when I caught that fish, yep. uh, right at the beginning of COVID. Yeah, so I got a, I got a bunch of pictures on my phone from like 2017, 2016, 17, 18. I fished there a lot. So like you said, and I would throw I would throw a whopper plopper. It was like when it first came yes, out. Yes, when it first came out, <laughs> dude. And those every cast, bro. It was like, oh, pow, right on the right, yeah. dude. I love topwater fishing. And oh, it, yeah. every every cast there with a whopper plopper, dude. We were wearing them out. That's a good place to fish. Yeah, but it does. People overlook it because it is hard to get in and out. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to have a boat to fish it. Yeah, yeah, period. If, yeah, you you can walk about seventy five yards of bank. That's it. Yeah, the rest is private. Yep. So pretty awesome. But it's uh, I won I won several kayak online kayak tournaments there back then sounds like we need to have a little fishing party there yeah that's what it sounds hey, like i got some kayaks we'll have to go i got out. one too so i'm in i don't have any yeah i got one you can use well what are you guys doing saturday <laughs> turkey, trying hunting, to go, bro. turkey hunting trying to go fishing we go on turkey hunting i can't i have nobody to take so it's a bummer. may be able to change that if you got a spot to take them i have no spot to take them okay <laughs> Never mind. Terry, that's why I call you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. funny. But, but yeah, like back to fly fishing, because I'm trying to learn a little bit about it. I'm somewhat interested in trying to do it. But like, like the whole like motion. Like you need one more hobby, bro. Your wife is going to be. Oh, yeah. She'll be pissed. But it is <laughs> So it is. I gave up pretty much conventional fishing completely Just for fly, fly fishing. fishing. If, I, if you see me with a conventional rod in my hand now, I can 100% guarantee you I don't own it. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, I've borrowed it from somebody. So, like, with fly fishing, to get the equipment, is it pretty expensive? Or For quality equipment, it is. What about, just, need what about just to get equipment? into it? I, I bought a, uh, what's it, Red? Reddington. Reddington. I bought a Reddington full setup with a seven-weight rod and... Uh, like a $200? Yeah, it was like 200 bucks. That's not terrible. For the rod and the reel. I mean, it's pretty expensive. I mean, it's expensive versus, yeah, compared, compared to versus, buy a $30 Walmart. Versus, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, for sure, but... <laughs> I mean, but, I uh, yeah, how. the barrier, barrier to entry on fly fishing is quite a bit greater than Just know, any other type of fishing, yeah. Because you have to buy, like... Waders. You, you got to buy waders. You got to buy those. Tip it. You got to buy... So just like a pole and line and everything, you think you get into it for a Benjamin? 
Like you could, but it's you, not going to be very quality. You're, stuff. you're not going to enjoy fly fishing with that. Yeah. Oh, okay, for real. So, it's like so that. it makes that much of a difference. Yes. It's I, w- a huge I, difference. I would plan to spend about two hundred dollars at least on your rod and reel setup for okay. a good, for your experience for to a be good good, yep. good entry level That's setup. Good setup. Yeah, I mean you could spend thousands. Oh yeah, I, I've got sure. guys I fish with that got like some of the Orvis Hydros and Helios and stuff, mm-hmm. and they're like twelve hundred dollar rods. <laughs> Just and the then rod. The yeah. reel is another eight nine. So what's what yeah. what difference in a rod does that make? Like spending two hundred dollars versus a thousand. The the cast that you know you see that the fish smoother. that just rose up underneath a bush somewhere, and with the rod that you have, you can make it six inches away from there. But with the rod that you pay that extra money for, you're going to put it right on the spot. Mm-hmm. Just that little bit more of being able to cast it that extra six inches. Control or, and yep. yep. And and the whole motion like that whipping motion is there like a technical term for that? Oh, uh, I mean just that's false casting, false yeah. casting it's just a cast. be false casting before you actually make the cast um but so when, it, you, so when a, you're doing that you're just getting the length to where you want it or what yes and no uh you're building up the momentum to get that ah. to where mm-hmm. it is because the line is what has the weight to it like i said you're casting the fly line not the fly yeah okay. uh, and that's where a lot of people kind, kind of struggle with it they're they're like they're trying to cast the fly and it's like you need to cast the fly line and you don't – women are honestly easier to teach to fly fish than men ever would dream of being because men want to throw it like they're throwing a bass rod. They want to try to cast it 200 yards Yeah, where you just kind of need to – It's lightly, more form. Yeah. Yeah, technique and form. you, you yeah, got to be there, light with yeah, it. Yeah, there is no muscle into it. Yeah. See, I feel like I do good at that. I feel like I would probably try to throw it. I felt like I, I would do good at it too, and then I got out there by myself and it – I feel like I'm just going to get out there. <laughs> I'm like, like out there doing this. Yeah, and see, that's what most people try to do. They're like, like whipping it. It's like, yeah, no, you're, you're not, you don't want to crack it, it like a whip. slowly yeah. going back and forth. Yeah. You'll literally break your fly off the end of the line. Well, yep. you can, For uh, real. Yeah, yeah, it'll crack like a whip and you'll lose your fly. Yep. I'd say Good once you know. get used to it, like you can feel like when the weight hits certain parts well, that, of You your feel the rod load up. And when you feel the rod load up, that's when you know you've got the line all the way backwards. And you're going to use that slingshot motion of the rod and you coming forward to throw the line forward. But also, you want to wait till that line gets all, all the, the way, way back straight. before you come forward. Because if yep. you don't, you'll whip your line. Yep. yep. Okay. You don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> you're not out there twirling a ribbon. But I mean, it's like, okay, look, you're 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 pulling the line back. The line's coming back. And when it's all the way back, it's ready to go forward now. And now you can go forward. Same thing when it's coming forward before you pull it back. It needs to be all the way out. So one of the coolest oh, a lot things of field, I've ever man, seen. That's why, that, that's why you got that pause at the end of each thing. Yeah, that's waiting for that rod to at, load up. I was at King Creek running two days ago. Yeah. Right before the big storm. And uh, I was watching a guy fly fish on the bank at King yeah. Creek. Too many branches for me. I, yeah, I was shocked to see it. But there's like some spot, there's I, some I know what you're talking do, about, yeah. where because I was just watching. Because that's the first time I've ever actually seen somebody in person, like fly fish. There's a bunch of bunch of rainbow trout in that lake, but they're I mean he had farm. I don't know what there's they were, also he was some, catching. They're about as mushy as wet so. bread. But there's also some <laughs> really big bass in that lake too. There from is. eating those rainbows. Yes, yes, sir. You is. ain't gonna catch them, but that is in a, there. if you can get on a boat. My dad has a photo. I'll have to bring it sometime or find it. I got a cousin that caught a 12 pounder out of there. Yeah, he's caught a nine pound out of Cane Creek. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. So everybody go fish at Cane Creek. Yeah. Yeah. That's the place to go, guys. Yeah. That's the place to go. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, no, but that's the first time I ever watched somebody do it. And I noticed like he was doing it and it would pause at the end. And then that's the thing I don't understand is like once you get to the end of your line and you're ready to pull back. How quickly do you have to do that? Because I feel like you're going to lose all your momentum and your line's well, just going to drop. that's where the feel kind of comes into place. And when you feel that rod load up, when the rod flexes, that line's completely straight behind you, and that's when it's time to make it come forward. And you're going to use – it's basically like a slingshot motion that the tip of the rod's going to make okay. as you come forward. So that's how hard you want to do it. You don't want to do it any harder than making What's the rod already, tip flex. Yeah. The yeah, you, don't, you, don't want to, you don't want to snap motions at all. It's just like a fluid – Fluid, fluid back and forth. Yep. yep. 
After we get done with it, we'll I'll break one out of the truck. I'm sure do you have one. Yeah, it's oh, probably to repetition to too. Like the more you do it, oh, 100 you know. percent. Yeah, but I'll yeah. tell you though, the coolest. So for me, I can cast the whole spool of line out if I go back and forth false cast. You know, four or five times. Yeah, because you're stripping line yeah. at the same time, right? So, so there's a guy that I met one day. I was fishing on my boat down at the local tailwater, and he's on the bank. Got a set of waders and stuff, and. He was like turning around, going to leave. The water was up to a point where you couldn't wade. I was like, dude, jump in the boat. Let's go fishing. And he ends up catching a stud of a rainbow trout. Like, thing was huge. Nice. And uh, we get to talking, and he's like, yeah, I own a guide service in Arkansas on the White River. I was like, oh, that's cool. And, you know, so we hang out all day long, fish, and I give him my contact info. And later on that night, he texts me his name and stuff. And I Google the guy just to find out about his guide service. And he's the winner of the ESPN Outdoor Games and Fly Fishing, runner up twice. <laughs> nice. Ball yeah, head. yeah. And like I could tell when he was fishing on the front of my boat, like you the knew guy, what he was doing. Yeah, like he could fish. And uh, so we ended up being buddies. We went to the fly fishing film tour and stuff together last year. And while we were there, you know, we were talking about casting a whole spool of line. Chuck was like, Yeah, that's pretty cool, but go get your rod. So come out and he's like, All right, strip every bit of line off of it and run it all the way down there. So I mean, whole spool. 90 foot spool of fly line yeah stretch it out on this sidewalk he says i'm gonna cast all of this line with one cast i was like okay yeah bs right <laughs> with my you know guide rods which i stick around that 200 hundred dollar price point on the guide yeah, rods because so. i don't want them to break the the really nice stuff yeah he lifts up every bit of that line one cast backwards and throws it all back out forwards perfectly straight how does he even do that I don't know. It, so it can be done. It can be done, yeah. but I have not reached that level yet. How long have you been guiding now? This will be my fifth season. Okay. Was it hard to get like your guiding license? So or as long as you're not f guiding on Coast Guard regulated water, you don't have to have the six-pack captain's license, all that stuff. Okay. Uh, so all Tennessee requires is that you buy the $150 guide license. That's it? Yeah. Yep. That's cool. That's cool. And then, of course, you got to have a business license to, yeah. to get the guide license, and there's a bunch of legal stuff with that. But yeah. So what you're telling me is I can go get my guide license. As long business as license? Have, probably yep. need to then learn how to fly fish first. Yep. And then I can go to every... You're going to have like a negative five-star review on Yelp. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know that. That's not what I'm here for, though. That's not what I'm here for, though. And then I can go on all these websites and get those uh, guided discounts. Yes. Okay. Good to know. And, and save $150 in your first purchase. And that's it? <laughs> I mean, you can save more than after that, but like I said, you can save $150 in your first purchase on some of those... Some of those websites? Yeah. But I have to spend the hundred and fifty bucks to, to get the to guide license. Get the guide license. Yep. <laughs> it has like forty bucks for a business license or something. Yeah, I think it's like state of Tennessee, it's twenty bucks or something. But no, that's funny. That's really cool, man. I guess the more you know. I've been interested in getting into it, but I've had absolutely no clue on how to even start. So Do you feel like doing a guided service somewhere. first is worth it and then get into it or yeah, uh, go with somebody that knows how to do it. Just get a little bit of instruction and then watch tons of YouTube videos. I would definitely recommend doing that because I just jumped into it feet first. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and it was super difficult. I I didn't catch. I've never caught a trout on fly fishing equipment yet. Caught a couple smallmouth, small smallmouth on a top water popper, but. You know, Still probably fun. Oh, super fun, dude. But Bend a rod like nothing you would ever... I mean, you Well, you know how smallmouth fight, especially in them creeks, man. Did you? Did I take you down there? Did we get on there yet? You've been down That's there. That's where right? we need to go do our fly fishing excursion. Yeah. We'll go wade that... that so, yeah, what a, so what about like the, the real part of the fly fishing? That's it just looks, for holding the line. Okay. Because it looks yeah, you're, like you're, really... You're stripping line to get... Really not that like. Yeah, uh, a lot me. of them don't even have drag in them. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it's just to hold the line, and you know you see a lot of times. So do you when, actually reel with it, or you I mean, can? Some people do when they get a big if fish. If you get a big on, fish yeah. and let them take so you what to do you the do? reel, do you just grab your line, grab the line, and you use a finger to control the line and oh, pull it in. You're stripping okay. the, yeah, you're pulling. And then once you pull pull it in, you just wind so up all your. It's basically to stage I your leave line. I it all but, out. 
And, yeah. Oh, and that then way you just I can start cast doing it again. again. Yep. Wow. That's cool. What were you saying? I interrupted you. No, you, you're good. I was just saying, so basically the reel with the fly fishing is just to stage your line. And yeah, that's yeah just it. to hold your line mm-hmm. on and until you're, while you're fishing, and then when you get done fishing, wind it back up. It's yep. like cane pole fishing for trout. What but fishing? Way cooler. Yeah, cane, way cooler. Cane pole. What in the Speaking world is Speaking of that? cane pole fishing, did you guys see those dudes who entered a crappie fishing tournament? With cane poles? In a... Yeah, pretty much cane pole. They were actually crappie rods, but they didn't have any reels on them. My dad had some of those. But listen, they entered a crappie tournament in in like an old sea nymph like John boat. And waxed everybody. No electronics on the boat, tiller motor, and they're out there fishing against people who have like hundred thousand dollar rigs with like live scope and mopped they, them. They mopped them up, dude. Wore Good. them out. Yeah. Won the tournament. Terry's proud of them. Well, I've always heard if you get into <laughs> oh, and those dude, those are some good old boys, man. Yeah. It was, it was there's a video. True, it's good awesome. Fisher. Yeah, they say if you get into like if you know how to crappie fish and you get into crappie fishing, that's ba- I mean it's basically just yeah, lifting up them and up. down, up and down. That's what it. I do, there what, ain't no reeling. Yeah, what I do oh. when I go, especially on you know where you caught that ten pounder, I'll just go get on a one of those treetops, just get 10 12 foot of line drop just start the, dipping drop the drop it down and just give move, it a good tug slightly move it every once in a while and bam they'll hit it catch the far out of them dude you don't catch any like big ones i've caught a couple big ones out of they there they get but, all eaten by the big bass before yeah. they get big no there's dude there's just so many like little eight nine inches in there yeah like they're just all competing in the you know I wish they'd let us call them out because then we'd have some really big ones in there. But, but yeah, I love crappie fish. I love fishing, period. I haven't done a lot of the it The only lately, fishing I've really done has just been bass fishing. Yeah. I love, that's my yeah. favorite. I enjoy it, man. I went on a guided trip with a buddy of mine a few weeks ago on Nickajack, mm. uh, and I'm not really a crappie fisherman. That's I'm not really the, one of the last things that I ever target. And my buddy that invited me to go with him, that's what he wanted to fish for was crappie. So we spent about two hours in this little marina and, like, skipping crappie jigs up underneath boats and stuff. And Mm -hmm. we caught several crappie and some pretty pretty nice ones. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but once we got back out on the big water and throwing the bass rods again, (laughs) that's much more appealing to me. Well, the reason I love crappie fishing is because like they eat. are very tasty. So, <laughs> I don't think I'm I've ever too had lazy it. to keep fish. You're that way with ducks too. You know that's what I noticed. Every time we went from duck hunting this year, you were like, "I don't want them. Y'all take them." <laughs> I mean, I keep. <laughs> I know well, you keep some, but I'm just saying. When I went with you, is, is you can only got so much freezer space, and I'm the only one in my house that eats it. Oh yeah, so, so your freezer is already full. Yeah, which I'm out of duck now. Which kind of sucks. sucks, but yeah, we got a long way to go, buddy. Yeah, see, my wife eats it too. She loves it. She actually likes it more than deer, so she was happy with me going duck hunting. <laughs> see, I like goose. I would rather have, dude. I'd rather yeah. have the goose. And, and man, how are you cooking it? Like a steak. Okay. Really? Are you salt brining pep- it or anything? Brush okay. it with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Medium rare on the grill. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically like a sirloin steak. See, I've heard that goose is terrible. They probably cooked it over medium rare. Over medium rare? Yeah, over medium rare, I found it starts to get kind of a wonky, irony taste. Huh. So but, you want to stay like at a medium rare yep. or rare. And that's kind of what I found even with duck. What is yeah, that? I, like I have noticed that. Yeah, I like yeah. duck at medium rare. Yeah, yeah. Anything over medium rare with waterfowl to me, it starts to get an irony, livery yeah. taste. Yeah. Ugh. Yep. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But yeah, if you keep it cooked right, though, I've not found waterfowl. What about yet. trout? I'll keep them every once in a while. They're not uh, that great to eat. No, they're really good. They're just bony. Yeah, mm. they're pretty bony. But my favorite way to cook them, I just take a big scoop of butter. After you well, gut them, and you can cook them with head on or head off. 
some people like them head on. I don't want my food looking at me when I eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so I, I cut the head off, split the belly, you know, field dress them and put a big scoop of butter in it. Two slices of lemon, lemon pepper, wrap it in aluminum foil and put it right in the coals of a fire and talk about Sounds good. It's, son. it's, it's pretty good because you can take a fork and grab the tailbone and basically pull all the bones pull out all of the it. bones out. Yep. Dang, it's dude. good, man. I'd yep. be willing to try it. I'd That's one of the it. few fish that I actually do like to eat. Like walleye, crappie, and trout. It's about the only fish I'll eat. Sauger. Sauger. I consider Sauger him is a walleye. walleye basically, yeah. But. Me, me and Hunter, me and Hunter went out fishing. And I wore some sauger out while he was on the back of the boat because <laughs> I only had one. It, I only had one of those baits that I was catching them on, and just got lucky and was. I wore it out while we were there. To yeah. be honest with you, it was a little Kitek, uh, a little swim bait, like swim thing. bait. Yep. But man, they was they were wearing it out. Them they? some wild looking fish. Them some prehistoric looking dudes. Anything that's got tasty, teeth though. is cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Walleyes got teeth, don't they? Oh, yeah. I've yeah. never caught a walleye. Have any of y'all ever caught a muskie? I was, I I was just about to is. ask you about that. Have you been down to the I've watched people on YouTube the catch them. It looks pretty awesome. I have, uh, and actually we moved some fish with fly gear down there. Yeah. I've never caught a muskie in Tennessee. A few years ago on my birthday, I went to Virginia, and my whole goal of the trip was to catch muskie, and this was when I was still conventional fishing. Yeah. And – I'm throwing, you know, this giant heavy rod, 11-inch baits, two days straight. I'm just throwing nothing but that. I had one follow on the first night and, like, the third cast I made. Second day, we're, like, half a mile from our takeout, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I haven't caught a fish. This is my birthday trip. I'm going to pick up a bass rod because it was the New River, which is known for some really big smallmouth as oh, well. Oh, I've climbed as the up there. Yeah. I've rock climbed up there. And uh, so I pick up my bass rod medium weight fiberglass crankbait rod 12 pound fluorocarbon and a big square bill very first cast i made with it i'm reeling and it just stops and i hook it and i'm like oh man i've got a giant small mouth <laughs> and it comes up to the top and all i see is this 40 inch long fish and i'm like oh my god it's a musky so I'm, yeah. like, I'm yelling you know up and down the river everybody's starting to paddle over to me yeah, as i'm yeah, fighting yeah. this fish <laughs> and get it in it's as long in the kayak and landed it in there. It's as long as my leg. My brother comes up, slaps the fish, and it was like slow motion. The fish starts to flop, breaks the hook off, and rolls into the water, and I never got a picture of it. Dang. The most heartbreaking thing. You got thing. slimed up pretty good, though. Yeah, didn't you, though? but the most heartbreaking <laughs> fishing thing that's ever happened, like the only muskie I've ever caught and didn't get a so picture of. Did you raise your hand backwards like this and slap your brother across the I, face? I should have. <laughs> I should have. So when you're muskie fishing, do you have to fish with any kind of leader or anything? Since yeah, teeth? generally steel generally, leaders. Yeah, uh, and that's why, you know, with 12-pound fluorocarbon, if I would have been using any kind of heavier weight rod than that fiberglass crankbait rod, probably I probably would have never, well, I never would have landed him. No. Because, I yeah. mean, if you would have hoisted on that 12-pound line with yeah. that big of a fish, it would have popped. Like they uh, like snap like a twig, dude. But I've still got the bait that I caught him on. Hooks all bent and crazy and teeth marks teeth all marks in, it. in it. Yeah, that's sick. I watched a guy on YouTube fishing out of a kayak, caught a muskie on a, like a little baby duck. That's that South Dakota South yak D angler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, dude, this yeah, thing he's like good. charged this North thing. Dakota. North wow. Dakota. Okay. ND yak. Yeah. Angler. Yeah. He's, I love watching that guy. Yeah. Man. He catches, he some catches, cool there's a baby duck. Dude, he catches giant smallies on that river, yeah. man. Sick. Musky pike. Mm -hmm. It's a cool channel. Yeah. ND yak angler. I don't know if it had like little feet or something on it, but it had something. Dude. That's the live target duck. Yeah. Live target duck. Yep. Musky will eat it for sure. What it do was, they even look like? Musky? I'm gonna try, yeah. I'm going to try to look at uh, it. It looks they like got a, like a uh, round mouth, like kind of a it's flat. It's like a duck bill yeah, mouth kind of almost, like and they've bill. got teeth. Like looks like a frog and a long. duck, like had and a baby big. and a yeah. and a fish. Some people like stab them through the eyes. I've seen them. That's pike, I think. Oh, pike. I don't know if you can stab You're right. the muskie. You're right. yeah, I think it's pike, illegal yeah. to stab the muskie, uh, but that's where they stab the sturgeon. Like that's definitely a Dude, dream. Those trip. things look wild. Uh, like spear and sturgeon, yeah, spear yeah. and sturgeon through so the So pike and musky kind of look similar, don't Same, they? They're the Essex family. Yeah, I'd like to catch pike too. 
old yeah, pike I, I used to catch chain pickerel and stuff all the time as a kid, which is basically a smaller version of a pike. Yeah. But we don't have pike here. That's a northern thing, right? Yep. yep. Like yeah. How far north do you have to go to get pike? Pretty far, don't you? I'm not sure where the cutoff line really is for them. Uh, I know they're in Pennsylvania and the Susquehanna are pretty heavy. Yeah. Did you ever fish the Finger Lakes? A few times when I was a kid, but don't really remember, you know, them too much. I, I do remember going and fishing Lake Pima Tuming, though, that's right on the uh, yeah. Ohio Pennsylvania border, and that was a that was Trip. a cool lake. I fished. I lived right across the street from the Susquehanna when I lived in Pennsylvania, up in Tunkanic. Yep. So I'm glad you said Tunkanic and not Tunkanuck, like everybody yeah. else. That Tunkanuck. No. I don't know how to say it. I guess it's tongue canic. Yeah, yeah. tongue canic. That's what everybody else said that yeah. lived there. So, uh, but yeah, it lived like uh, there's a little restaurant called Twigs. Have you ever been to tongue canic? Oh yeah, you know Twigs right there on I the square. Don't remember well, any of the places, but there, the, right there, dude, we lived right across the street. So like right across the main drag, there was the Susquehanna. Did you Where, ever get to fish it? I did. Yeah, catch a bunch of smallmouth. A bunch of smallies. Yeah, yeah. bro. Yep. Pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. Just fished man. it off the bank. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we used to wade fish it in uh, white socks. It's not that deep. No, no, and but it's swift sometimes. Oh, uh, it does get swift, yeah. Uh, yeah. But we would wade fish it when I was a kid, and we would go out behind this factory, and, you know, the ongoing joker was like, you better not eat any fish out of there. You'll glow in the dark. And, you mm-hmm. know, my whole childhood, I'm out there waist deep in it wading. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm sure that's a lot better. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah, really the only fishing, because I didn't really start fishing until last year. The um, But all I really hit was King Creek Park, man. What'd you do growing up, man? Weed. Weed. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I smoked a lot of weed. That's what I did. And it shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you had that, that lazy stuff. Oh, dude, growing up, that's, that's like all I did. That and played video games. That's all I cared about. There it is. Yeah, that's video what games. he did. That's about it, bro. My parents oh. kicked me out of the house and said, don't come back until we tell you to. That is not what my parents so I Here's was, a twenty-two uh, rifle. Here's a fishing pole. Don't come back till dark. Yeah, I was wading up and down the creeks catching. Creek did we used chubs. to catch. <laughs> we used to catch spring lizards, creek chubs, and crawfish and sell them for bait. I made a killing as a kid when I was like Too bad you still 10, can't 11 fish with spring lizards. Yeah. yeah. Dude, oh, you talking about of that? Man, you can catch some freaking big fish with them. Yeah, dude, that that creek beside my parents' house, man, was loaded with spring yeah. lizards. There's a place down in my grandparents. They they got a a natural spring, and man, it is loaded with them. Mm-hmm. Those and those little salamanders. Yeah, I used to sell them. What I sell them for? I mean, this was. Before it was LA. 25 years ago. I think I used to sell them like uh, $15, $16 a dozen, something like that. Mm. People would buy them, dude, 25 years ago. I wasn't even alive 25 years ago. I know you weren't. (laughs) I was in kindergarten. Were you really? How old are you, Terry? I'll be 30 this year. Oh, well, congratulations, bro. That's exciting. Yeah, 30, 30. Uh, You're about to... About to crest, bro. It's all downhill <laughs> from there. It's not the years. <laughs> everything it's the miles. St- everything starts hurting after thirty. <laughs> For real. Oh, right now you're already yeah. uh, your backs. Did you go see Justin yet? Yeah, dude. Did he text me the other day and he's like, "Bro, Justin does wonders." <laughs> yeah, he really does. Is Man, that the first time you went and seen him? It, it was. Oh, yeah, dude. And you know, like you see all this stuff and you watch the videos of like these giant rollers getting crushing people into the floor, and I'm like, that doesn't look like that's gonna be the greatest thing ever it feels like i would park in a car on your back oh dude well, as soon as he set it on my back and rolled it the first time and everything popped oh yeah it feels so good i, I was like just crush me into the floor please yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro just keep going <laughs> yeah yeah that yeah. first time every time i go back and he pops every single one of those vertebrates bro it feels so good your your yeah. wife did it the other day too didn't she bro she's she's hurting right now is she hurting <laughs> yeah she said she felt like she got hit by a train i bet I mean, it does feel like Cause that she got the, the full. Moment. She got rolled and scraped and cupped and yeah, that's, yeah. that's what did I you did get, too. Yeah, 
And she Dude, never had that. Feels done. like you're getting stung on your back a hundred times. See, that's the thing. I don't know if it's just where my back is in so much pain most of the time. Yeah. I never felt the cupping or the scraping. Huh. See, the scraping kind of hurts to me, but the cupping feels good. Yeah, my well, wife. Well, he like showed me a picture of my back after he did the scraping, and it would look like somebody had flogged <laughs> it looked me. Like he yeah. lashed you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. And he's like, yeah, some people say that hurts. I was like, I didn't even. I just felt like it hurt me. It felt good. (laughs) When he was scraping me, it felt like he was scraping me with a hot knife. It was awful. (laughs) I was. uh, He went with me whenever he just rolled me out and cuffed me, and uh, he was in there talking to Justin. I told Justin, I was like, man, put those cups on him real quick. And he started (laughs) scraping them on her. It's like, ah. Oh, dude, it hurt. It felt like I'd like a million bees. Attacking my back. <laughs> That's what it does feel like to me, too. But, but my dude, wife, not dude, to me. I her, think it feels yeah, good. I just where he kept her man. up on her shoulders, it looks awful. Yeah. That's but where the bad spots were then. Yeah. Hers were like on her leg. Like he, you, he, she had one hip that was like fully locked or something. Yeah. She was like, I had all kinds of stuff wrong with me. I didn't even know what was going on. My back looks like I stood in front of a pitching machine though, right now. <laughs> yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. Women hold tension a lot in their shoulders and neck. My wife, every time she goes, her neck and shoulders look like she got Must be a hit with a paintball thing. gun. Yeah. Gosh. No, that's cool. Well, uh, that's about it. That all, our, all I really wanted to talk about was fly fishing because I've been so curious about it. Yeah, it's starting to warm up, bro, and I'm trying to get get out there. So. Hey, we trying I've to go frog gigging. Yeah, yeah, that's he ain't another never thing. been. And I want. I really, really, yeah, really. But you've want never to go. eaten frog legs. Mm-mm. Oh, you've never eaten frog legs. I've never been gigging. I've never eaten frogs. Bro. Oh, oh man. dude, frog legs we, are delicious. Should we just take them huh? to Ollie's I've, first and let them eat some frog legs so they know what they're going after? I mean, I think. No, I've been frog gigging a bunch. It's in Salina. Salina, yeah. Okay. Hey, we got dude. I, we I got go a kitchen here, bro. My parents have a. At Horse Creek, they got a little houseboat there. Yeah. Every time we go, we come back and hit all these up, yeah. get some, get some frog legs, bro. Frog legs and good. an elephant burger. Yeah, and some dude, they got good catfish there too, man. Oh, catfish sounds so good right now. Yeah. I'd eat the crap out of that. I don't do catfish. You don't like catfish? Would you eat carp? Probably. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Does that say something about me? Yeah. I mean, we ate. Coyote. I thought catfish was good. It's just like the mud cats is the ones you don't want to eat. Dude, I'll eat anything. Yeah, I will too. Yeah, I know. I saw you guys eat coyote. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did. Yeah, I think that's I got the a tapeworm thing from I'm, it too. Yeah. That's the wildest thing. <laughs> my stomach's been hurting ever since we ate that. Stupid it's in thing. his head. No, dude, it's not. No, in no my it's head. actually in his belly. It's the, yeah, it's the actually worm. in my stomach. <laughs> so I feel fine, man. For now. I'm not hurting at all or nothing. No, I think I think I'm trying I, I, to freak out a little bit because you are, but <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I've got like a weak stomach anyway. So, well, hopefully, Jude smashes one. And we'll be eating turkey this time next week. Yeah, yeah man. it, it cool. was funny talking about stuff making your belly upset and being so. A couple years ago, I killed a bunch of geese, and Kyle at Whitleyville Station made me some pastrami out of the goose breast yeah, yeah and i took it to work and i mean like i had been eating it for days <laughs> and i was like this stuff is awesome yeah so i brought it to work and i was like here you go you know guys try this out one of the guys <laughs> ate it because <laughs> sick as a dude, dog dude. <laughs> he was like i don't know what was in that but my belly is tore up <laughs> and I, I was like you just don't eat wild game do you? he's like that's like the first wild thing i've ever ate yeah, <laughs> yeah. <that> you, <laughs> Probably started off a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. too, too, too rich for his blood. I yeah. guess. No, that's funny. Well, uh, Hunter, I appreciate you joining us, Chad. It's a pleasure as always. Uh, yeah, Terry, bro, I'm glad to have you back, man. Thanks for uh, for coming on the podcast. Yeah, it's always. I'm good excited to, to hang out with you guys. Yeah, dude, I'm excited to end this podcast and see what fly fishing is all about. So, but appreciate you guys listening, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>